wish everybody a very Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy New Year. This is great to see everybody, and uh, we really appreciate your guys coming out and supporting Connectpreneur. We have some great presenters today, and uh, we're going to be rocking pretty late tonight. We have uh, Refraction. Where's Esther? Okay, I'll introduce Esther momentarily, but we'll be going upstairs quarter to nine-ish, and uh, she's got music and wine and beer and dessert, so enjoy. We can uh, show the space, show off our space. My office is up there as well. So um, I don't want to make a lot of comments, but I do want to thank our sponsors, and they are in the book, uh, starting with Fairfax EDA. We have Victor Hoskins, President and CEO here, who's instrumental in supporting our program. Thank you so much, Victor. <laughs> Victor, Victor will say a few words momentarily. Um, I also want to thank, obviously, Refraction, s Next, powered by Shulman Rogers. You'll meet Lisa Friedlander shortly. We have Forbis, which is a big eight accounting firm, and Ling will be introducing our last four presenters later. Northern Virginia Tech Council, we're going to hear from Jen Taylor, who's the CEO. This is not your mommy or daddy's NBTC. We have a whole new face and a whole new everything. What she's doing is unbelievable. So um, I'm really excited to hear more, and we're glad to partner with you, Jen. Thank you so much. Uh, Bank of America Private Bank, New York Life, Stella Pop, AEG, Association for Enterprise Growth. Everyone's got a table outside, so please visit them and say hi. Uh, Ryan and Wetmore, they've been supporting us for 11 years. Uh, Northern Virginia Chamber of Commerce. We have the Baltimore Angels, Truist Bank, we have Kairetsu Forum. Fred Gumbinner's here. He runs a DC chapter. Uh, that's a global investment firm. Uh, George Mason Enterprise. Mason Enterprise, thank you. Um, Startup Grind. Patrick Bryan is here. Patrick right there. He runs the DC chapter. So make sure if you, if you want to get on his list, he puts on some of the best events around. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, we have Fitzy, the annual Wharton DC Summit. USIDC and Kobe. Thank you, Matthew Lee. Uh, National Association of Business Owners and Entrepreneurs, Founder Institute, the Maryland Tech Council, the Smith School of Business Dingman Center for Entrepreneurship, we have the Center for Advancing Innovation, we have Georgetown Entrepreneurship, represented by several students here, and we have the Institute for Excellence in Sales. Fred Diamond, are you here, Fred? Fred is the gentleman who wrote two books, and he's out there doing book signings. So uh, very interesting books. He runs the Institute for Excellence in Sales as well. So. Without further ado, I, I just want let's give it up for our sponsors because <laughs> without our sponsors, this, this event just doesn't happen. And I'd like to bring up Esther Lee first. Esther, come on up and say a few words about refraction. Talk about our wonderful koi pond and this incredible New York style building. It's just a beautiful building. But thank you for all your support. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. I, I am incredibly lucky to have Tian on our board. I know lots of people want Tian on their, on, on their boards. Um, uh, welcome to the home of Refraction. So I'm asking all of you to come to our after party at 8.30 uh, upstairs on the eighth floor. Last, I think last time we did this, we had people till 11.30. It was crazy. Uh, so welcome. I'm Esther Lee, um, the CEO of Refraction. Refraction is a nonprofit innovation hub and co-working space. So we have wonderful startups um, as members that are doing incredible things in AI and quantum and um, uh, cyber and, and more. Um, and we provide not just office space, but also mentors, executive coaching. We introduce them to customers and investors. And we have great partners like the uh, Fairfax County EDA, the Virginia Innovation Partnership Corporation, Amazon. In fact, our members can get as much as $25,000 in AWS. AWS credits. We've got Cox, Dominion Energy, and others. We run uh, what we call the Smart City Challenge, uh, which is a, a global competition uh, for great ideas in transportation, healthcare, infrastructure, and the rest. So we do a lot of different things, but mostly we help startups grow and create jobs in Fairfax County. Um, I had the great fortune of working with Victor when he was running um, Arlington Economic Development, and we were going after, I was Secretary of Commerce of Virginia, we were going after Amazon HQ2, and the reason we won is because of Victor. So thank you, Victor. <laughs> um, bringing, 
bringing wonderful jobs to, to Virginia and, and really changing the ecosystem. Uh, when, when I was secretary, we talked a lot about how do we uh, um, create more jobs in, in Virginia. And I will say, you all know probably in the last 20 or 30 years, all net new jobs in this country were created by startups, which is why we really care about startups and helping them grow, giving them assistance, uh, get, getting them funded, which is what TN is doing. And one of the reasons Northern Virginia is known for its ecosystem and so many entrepreneurs actually come here. We actually have companies that uh, came here for an accelerated program from Slovakia and decided, you know what, this is a great place to locate. So they actually moved their headquarters from Slovakia and moved here to Fairfax County. So all I can say is thank you, Tian, for all you do for the ecosystem and Jennifer and, and Lisa and others that have done so much to make this a great place to grow a company, to live and play, as, as you say, at the EDA. So welcome, and I hope to see you at the after party. We'll have lots of um, wine and beer and, and, uh, and, and fun. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Esther. Now I'd like to bring up a man who needs absolutely no introduction, uh, fellow Dartmouth alum and uh, he, former deputy mayor of DC, he has worked in Baltimore, he's worked in DC, he has ran Arlington, he's responsible for bringing Amazon to our region. He's the most collaborative economic development professional in the country. Thank you, we're so lucky to have you, Victor. Victor Hoskins. Thank you, Tia. First of all, I am not responsible for bringing Amazon. <laughs> Is that it's a team, you know, and everybody in this room that runs a company knows it's about the team, it's not about you. And that is the thing that helped us win it. We actually had Loudoun County, Fairfax County, um, Arlington County, and Alexandria all working together to get Amazon. In addition to that, we worked with the groups around the DMV. That's how we won Amazon because 229,000 people in Arlington County was not going to meet that demand for, for talent. It was the six million people in our region. It's the three million workers. It's the 60 universities. It's the 400,000 400, enrolled, the 90,000 graduating every year. Those were the numbers that convinced Amazon. That is, and, and we have an incredible quality of life. I mean, all of us that live here, we are so lucky. Um, what, I, what I'd like to tell you this, this evening is that, number one, I, I have some incredibly talented people that work for me right now that have done great things with small companies. I'm um, actually David. Kelly right there, raise your hand, David. David Kelly rolled into a guy's office, a guy named James Quigley. And he rolled into the office, and I think he had like four employees. James Quigley had stepped out of the Navy, decided he wanted to get into technology. He developed a tech company and got a little hand holding from David and others in our office. His company grew to about 500 plus, and he just sold it. And now he's a serial investor, entrepreneur, and also on my board. He's gonna be the chair of my board next year. That's what happens to companies that, that come in this county and look around. These resources are yours, and they just don't come from us. And it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter your nationality, it doesn't matter your, you know, it doesn't matter what you are, who you are, as long as you want to build a business. And Karen Schmall right there sitting right next to David, she's been working with a gentleman named Warren Thompson. Warren Thompson. Do people know Warren Thompson? Are you probably eating his food? Um, his company generated about $800 million last year. He started his company here in 92, just at the beginning, coming out of the hospitality industry and just grew up. Um, I think he's the largest African-American um, owned um, um, food service company in the country. Up and grew up in Fairfax County. That's what happens here. And then he came back and worked with us with our Entrepreneurship 101. We've serviced about 6,000 companies through, through this program. We work with Virginia State Diversity um, Alliance. We work with Small Business Administration. Actually, Karen runs that program. We want to help your company grow. That's all I want to tell you. We have talent to help your company grow. We have international talent. Got Jatinder back there. She runs our, our international division. We have offices in, in, um, in Israel. I just came back from our office in Israel, which is in Tel Aviv. I'm headed to Mumbai, Bangalore, um, and, and Delhi um, in February. We have offices in Berlin. We have offices in Seoul. We have offices in London and in the foreign country of California. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter what foreign country you want to go to. We have connections there. And we have had companies come here and buy, Israeli companies have come here and bought companies. They've come here and grown their company. German companies have come here, aerospace companies from, from, from the UK. The bottom line is that we want to help you grow and we will put those resources in your hand. The last thing I will say is this, there's, there's a wave going through this region right now of cooperation, of collaboration. 
there's a thing called the Northern Virginia Economic Development Alliance that we started three years ago after Amazon. I sat down with the leaders in economic development around the region. I said, we really need to work together. Look, look what we got for working together. So we've been working together for three years. We will actually be an official organization next month. Um, but for the last three years, we've been doing a number of things. One, we um, actually helped put on the Quantum World Congress, the first one in the world. It was done in Washington, D.C., a three-day conference. We did that in conjunction with Connected DMV. We put our resources behind that to bring business, over 700 people from around the world, seven Nobel laureates, 17 countries represented, billions of dollars in discussions about alliances between countries, which eventually turns into businesses. And that's really what we want to do. We want to bring new industries. So that is, is one of the things we've been doing. The other thing is this, which is free to everybody in this room. If you have a company in Northern Virginia, in the 10 jurisdictions in Northern Virginia, we will help you market your positions. We right now market 124,000 positions for free for our companies. We connect, we connect companies to businesses. We've connected over 5,000 um, individuals to company job opportunities. Our, our website has had over a million hits, over 400,000 sessions, over 60,000 job views for free for our companies. All you have to do is have a business license in Northern Virginia. So come get something free from us. And thank you so much for growing your business here. Thank you so much, Victor. Um, we also have, uh, we run virtual events, which we started doing when the pandemic hit. And we'll circulate some QR codes later on. We have one next week. These are the largest investor pitch events in the world. And we broadcast them right upstairs at Refraction. So uh, hopefully you guys can join us next Wednesday. Um, now it's my pleasure to introduce the not so new, but new uh, CEO and president of the Northern Virginia Tech Council. Northern Virginia Tech Council is the largest tech council in the country. They do amazing things, tremendous the work you guys are doing, and tremendous what you guys have done the last couple of years. So let, let me introduce Jen Taylor. Jen. Hi, thanks. I'm going to go behind the podium. Okay. okay. So thank you, Tian, for hosting this event and enabling startups to be seen and, and showcase their innovation. That's just incredible, and I um, am, am, am a big fan of the work that Tian has done. Also, it's nice to see you, Victor, um, and, and all of you in the room. So um, let me tell you a little bit about um, the Northern Virginia Technology Council. Um, I took um, the helm of uh, this tech council in September of 2020 and had some big shoes to fill. Bobby Kilberg, you may know her, was um, the president and CEO for 22 years. Um, NVTC, for those of you who don't know, is the region's trade association representing the national capital region's very diverse technology ecosystem. We have um, over 450 members, and they come from all sectors of the industry, from small businesses to startups to Fortune 100 companies like Amazon and Microsoft, Google. Um, and uh, we also have um, um, higher ed education institutions and um, community colleges and many nonprofits. And what we exist for is we are a resource for networking, educational activities, peer-to-peer -peer communities of interest, policy and advocacy uh, to um, help um, advance um, innovation and grow our, our tech ecosystem. Um, we also foster strategic relationships and branding of the region as a major tech hub. We have story after story of companies that have merged and, 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 and grown and um, continue to have a positive impact. To put these metrics um, behind our recent efforts, since I joined um, MBTC in September of 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, uh, we've um, had over 15 signature events um, with the now more than half of them in person and over 100 virtual events. So like many other organizations, we had to pivot and reinvent to ourselves. The good news out of all this is that we moved from being like an in-person events organization to more virtual, and now we are engaging more and more people in our tech ecosystem. Um, and it's been over 15,000 people since I, since I joined. Just to give you a flavor of the type of members that we have, again, Amazon, thanks to the collaborative work of you know, the regional um, economic development associations. And um, we also have Appian, who's in this building, Deloitte, KPMG, GDIT, Google, Microsoft, Oracle, SAIC, um, Booz Allen, 
Dominion Energy, Deltac, Uninet. I, I mean, I just could go on and on. We have such a, a, a vibrant um, tech ecosystem. And it also includes many startups. So we have about 100 startups. And it's important that we continue to provide our relevance and, and value to them so that they can grow their, their businesses. We also have many university uh, presidents on our board. And that's really important because they're helping us address the region's skills gap. So um, when I started, we one of the first things we did was um, develop a five-year strategic plan. And I just want to make sure everybody leaves here knowing that this council's mission is to accelerate tech innovation in this region, as well as promote our world-class workforce. We can't grow this tech sector without having the right talent here. So we're working really hard and with a number of initiatives to um, close our region's skills gap. And our vision is to be the most collaborative tech hub in the world. What, separa what separates this region from any other is that the federal government is the largest purchaser of tech products and services. So that's something that we're proud of and that we lean into. So um, what else can I share with you? Um, we, as I said, we created our five-year strategic plan, and we have four key strategic pillars. And one is we want to grow this tech community. So any startup that is, you know, interested in, in planting their seeds here, we, we really invite you and encourage you to do that. There's so many resources here from MBTC, um, as well as Infracture and, and, and other um, organizations. And like Tian said, it's a great place to work and live and learn. Um, we're also working to infuse the next generation of talent into our workforce. And um, we have a number of initiatives there. I'm trying to um, encourage um, our member companies to engage the next gen um, through networking events and intern receptions. And we just launched an apprenticeship um, kind of announcement that we want to um, help our member companies um, embrace new collar workers um, under um, uh, apprenticeships for IT related roles. We're also trying to, um, we're also working to embed DE&I best practices into the fabric of our community. We want Northern Virginia, we want Virginia to be known as a welcoming state where all people are welcome and have job opportunities. And we also want to continue to evolve and modernize in anticipation of our future. There are emerging technologies that are happening right before our eyes. We want to make sure we're watching them and then inviting them into our tech community. One example that's happened over the past you know, 20 years is we now, this region, is the data center capital of the world. We are so proud of that. Um, more you know, data is um, passing through this region than any other place. And we're also, we also have other things we're really proud of. We have Micron. They're you know, a silicon chip manufacturer right here in our backyard. I don't know if a lot of people know that. We have Iridium here, satellite um, company, and their control center is right in Leesburg, Loudoun area. Um, so we have a lot to be proud of. And what I want to leave you, leave you with today is that you know, I've been working here for 32 years, and I just wish in the early 90s I knew about MBTC. I was working for an ad agency right next door to AOL on Westwood Center Drive. I'm dating myself. But what I, I want to make sure that all of our member companies are letting their employees know, as well as the next generation, that we have a tech council, and we want people to come in here and network and learn about emerging technologies and also celebrate our next generation leaders as well as innovators because this is where tech thrives and this is where people can connect and meet everybody in the tech ecosystem. We're that one place where everybody is. So um, for those of you who are in the area and want to learn more about MBTC, feel free to email me at jtaylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, at MBTC to learn more. Um, I've been working diligently over the last two years to modernize our operation. We are in the process of modernizing our website. It'll launch the new one in April. So don't be judgy when you go to my website. <laughs> but <laughs> but we're, we're moving to WordPress, and, and we're making sure that everything we do, our core value is to put the member first and to put our members first and make sure we're serving them so that they can advance their business and, and thrive in this area. So, Tian, thank you so much for inviting me and for letting me tell you a little bit about MBTC. There are tech councils all around the country. Um, there's actually an association called TechNA. It's the tech councils of North America. And I am the vice chair of, the, of TechNA. And um, I so value all these different tech hubs all around our country. They all have their unique thing. And we need all of them. But I'm 
rooting for Nova, right? And serving the national capital region. And I invite you know all of you to come and, and engage with us. Um, so thank you again for having me. Thanks, Jen. Really appreciate your support and also for everything you're doing in our community. Really awesome stuff. All right, so we have eight presenters today. Each one is four to four and a half minutes. No Q&A. If you have Q&A, all of our presenters have a table out in the networking area, and you can reserve your questions for them there, and also hopefully set up some deep dive follow-up meetings for later on this week or next week. To introduce our first four presenting companies, I'd like to introduce Lisa Friedlander. Lisa is uh, an attorney and also an entrepreneur. When I first met Lisa, she was running a startup. Uh, we were both Mindshare alumni, and uh, she's now running... Uh, marketing for Next, powered by Shulman Rogers. Next is disrupting the way startup law is being done around the country. They've got lots of clients from around the country. They have fixed price packages, perfect for startups and early stage companies. And congrats on your recent award. They won uh, Startup Law Firm of the Year last year from Legal Week. And last two weeks ago, we were in New York and you were a finalist. For innovation in law. Innovation in law. From American Lawyer, yes. From American Lawyer. So great job. Anyway, Lisa's Thanks, here. Ian. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, is this working? To, okay, we we'll can oh. leave that right there. Okay. Yeah. A clicker should be done. Oh, well, that's right. Okay. Hello, everyone. Happy holidays. Good to see everyone. Tien, thank you and Esther for bringing us together always with such great celebratory environment and excited to see everyone. Thank you to Jennifer and Victor for all you guys and your fabulous organizations continue to do to build this incredible ecosystem. I, when I launched my company back in 2012-ish, it's unbelievable. It never ceases to, me ama to amaze me how far we've come and how much I know we're going to continue to go. I believe DMV is number six now on the list of ecosystems, and I know we're going to be in the top five um, in no time. So it's an honor to be here on behalf of Next, powered by Shulman Rogers, as TN mentioned. Um, we are an award-winning and innovative model for the delivery of legal services to startup and emerging growth companies, and it's truly an honor to be a partner of Connectpreneur. So without further ado, I have the great pleasure of uh, introducing our first company, which is Age Diagnostics. Age Diagnostics is using genomic innovation to develop the most accurate blood test for liver disease, to reduce financial burden for insurers, improve patient outcome through early detection and intervention. Please welcome the CEO of Age Diagnostics, Rachel Zayas. Good evening. When I was working at MIT in cancer research, I realized that the tools we were using were not being well translated into the clinic. I saw an opportunity to apply genomic innovation to improve the lives of patients. Our team is working together to create the most accurate blood test for liver disease. Harnessing genetic tools, our tests would be more accurate than other alternatives for early detection, intervention, and improved outcomes for patients and their families. Did you know that one in three Americans or 100 million people in the United States have fatty liver? This disease is not associated with alcohol consumption, but rather diabetes, obesity, and metabolic syndrome. It is called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or NASH. Many patients are unaware that they have NASH until the disease has progressed to later stages when it is no longer treatable nor reversible. The reason for these trends is that there are zero effective diagnostic tools that can differentiate benign from advanced form of NASH. Imaging tools are inaccurate. The sole diagnostic test is a liver biopsy. These are expensive, invasive, prone to sampling error, and bleeding. Therefore, they cannot serve the population at large. At AGED, we are developing the first accurate blood test to differentiate the benign from advanced form of liver disease. Our tools will help hepatologists improve patient outcomes, reduce the financial burden on health insurers, and aid in early detection and intervention. Here's how our technology works. We take a patient blood sample and we isolate very specific biomarkers associated with liver disease as well as liver damage. Then we quantify the concentration of these biomarkers. Past a defined concentration, we can say with a high clinical accuracy that the patient currently has liver disease. 
The market opportunity is vast and growing. Globally, there are more than 2 billion patients who are considered high risk. Each year, health insurers in the United States spend more than $100 billion on management for liver disease. Age seeks to capture 25% of the US market, which equates to more than a $27 billion yearly market opportunity. There are zero blood tests for NASH. So our competitive advantage is that we would be the first blood test to diagnose this disease. We'd be less expensive than the gold standard, which is a liver biopsy, as well as all other imaging modalities. And last, but certainly not least, we would be the most accurate diagnostic tool on the market by targeting highly innovative genomic regions. So we expect to be the most accurate tool for decades to come. We've had exciting traction to date. We just completed our first of several pilot studies and identified a set of biomarkers that could differentiate the benign from advanced form of liver disease with nearly 90 to 99% accuracy. We've recently partnered with the Henry Jackson Foundation, which is a subsidiary of the US military. Uh, we expect to launch uh, a clinical trial by 2024 with our partner hospitals and launch into the market as a service as a lab developed test by 2025. We are the team poised to take this technology to market. We have 100 years in hepatology, 75 years in business, 40 years in genetics. Uh, we've had five exits and secured more than 125 million in funding to date. We expect to launch by 2025. In year one, um, we seek to launch as a lab developed test as a service and be reimbursed at a rate of $700 per patient per tool. In year one, we seek to capture 0.1% of the US market, service 25,000 patients, and generate 17.5 million in revenue. By year three, we seek to pursue FDA approval, and by year five, we plan to exit with some of our current partners. We have previously raised 550,000. We're currently raising 1.75 million to reach several critical business milestones. We're hungry, humble, and yearning for progress. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you at the booth later. Excellent presentation, Rachel, and sounds truly revolutionary. Um, our next company is Atero. Atero is a B2B software platform specifically designed to accelerate online reordering for manufacturers and distributors who receive purchase orders still the old-fashioned way. I guess this still does happen. Uh, moving entire books of business from offline to online, please welcome CEO George Spears. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Tian. I'm George Spears, CEO and founder of Atero, and we've created an online reordering system for the customers, for the customers of manufacturers, distributors, and the final B2B end buyer. The problem is these channel partners have not fully embraced technology. Uh, as we just heard, it's hard to believe, I can't believe I'm saying it out loud, but they still rely on fax machine, pen and paper, and phone to intake purchase orders. It's insane. However, the, what result is that entire channels are offline due to inefficient business practices. And so this is a definition of unrealized innovation. And so why haven't they embraced technology? Uh, it's product, it's digital product information. That really has been the roadblock uh, for these channels and for these legacy industries. There's millions of SKUs that need to be managed and it's just so labor intensive to do on an individual company basis. So we've solved this problem with our central digital, uh, excuse me, central digital library. And how we've done this is we've amassed a number of catalog items ourselves and what uh, allows us to do is manufacturers and distributors can use our library to sell from. They can also add their own products regardless of category and as a stat we can ingest over well 10,000 products in under 60 seconds. So our software modules and tools just enable our customers to easily move their offline book of sales online and unlock their untapped customer base. 
So traction, we have over 680,000 unique SKUs in our platform across a number of categories. We have over 1,700 registered users transacting across the United States and Canada. We're also involved with some group purchasing organizations. One group is a, a group of 100 distributors. We have a medical distribution buying group that we're involved with as over 1,200 members. We have some very well-known brands transacting on the platform. Popeyes, Fat Burger, Universal Studios are some examples, and we have many more. We're currently charging $6,000 to $10,000 SaaS subscription fee, but we will have the opportunity to earn transaction fees as well as revenue share. It's a massive market. Uh, over uh, globally, uh, particularly, but here's some reference points in the United States. There's over 700,000 manufacturing businesses and over 400,000 wholesale distributors. Globally, it's a trillion dollar market, and uh, these stats are only going to grow um, uh, to uh, 2027 when ex we expect this market to hit $18 trillion globally. So we have a very experienced team. Uh, I've, been, I've owned multiple businesses uh, in this space. Uh, Gonzalo, for example, he is involved with an acquisition roll-up in the medical distribu distribution space. And Patricio has a lot of experience with import and export. We collectively, we've worked together a number of years on um, facilitating transactions, agricultural commodity transactions between Brazil and Asian Pacific countries. So we have a lot of experience in this space to scale. So we're seeking $1.25 million convertible note that would fund into a larger round. And our ideal financial partner would be a makeup of angels and family offices. We have current investors. Here's a list of them. And we have one of our investors, Kay Hall. She'll be here at the table if you'd like to uh, ask. She's available for Q&A as well. And so financial projections. Now, one thing to note on this slide is it's a very profitable, high margin business since the platform has been built. And we have a number of clients. So think about 1,000 to 2,000 clients over a global of all the millions of potential customers, and we will create a thriving business. So please come see us at the table. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Yeah, I thought fax machines have gone by the way of Wally. I don't even remember the last time I saw one. <laughs> Our next presenter is uh, from Giveo. Giveo provides a charitable banking, the first ever cause marketing platform that actually integrates into an account user's own online banking platform, making it super easy for people to give to their favorite charity on a regular basis. Please welcome CEO Gary Carr. Thank you and good evening, everybody. So, charitable banking is the future of giving, and Giveo is charitable banking. Wait. Ah. Come on. Okay, there we go. So, um, we are transforming an industry. We're first to market. It's a $330 billion charitable giving industry. We have customers. We have released our V2 product. We are generating revenue. We're planning a Series A in 2023, and I'm here to talk about a uh, bridge loan, bridge financing, to get us to that next point. Giveo is at the intersection of two problems in two industries. In the charitable giving world, financial transaction processing is far behind what we expect as consumers today from our, charitable, from our uh, financial transactions. Uh, on the financial side, banks and credit unions are looking for more innovation in order to acquire new customers, retain their account holders, and present their brand as purpose-driven. The solution to both of these is Giveo. Giveo is a charitable giving platform that integrates with your banking systems, the core banking systems that are running our banks today. Next slide. Oh, come on. How does it work? We integrate with the bank. The bank presents us with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of customers, their account holders. We make charitable giving super simple. You can give to any charity in the country. The banks 
promote charitable giving. They promote their favorite charities. They promote cause programs. They run these giving campaigns. More donors, repeat donors, more promotions, more repeat donors. That's how we build our user base. There we go. Giving Tuesday. People give on Giving Tuesday just two weeks ago. Three of our banks, thank you very much. I appreciate the participation. Um, three of our customers launched with giving programs around Giving Tuesday. They raised money for 176 charities. We were promoted on social media, um, inside of our portals, on the internet, in intermail with press releases. A lot of great stories came out of this. One that I'm going to tell you, one of my favorite. We had a donor give to 14 different charities over the course of the day. At one point, he was giving to two or three different charities every few minutes. You cannot do that on any other charitable giving software platform. So we got a lot of traction. We've already integrated with two core banking systems and we're working on numbers three and four. We've signed 21 banks and credit unions. They represent 1.4 million account holders. So we're very busy right now. We're booking banks and we are activating their customers. Our largest and most recognizable brand, American Airlines. The trends are very clear for us. We're not paving new ground. We're innovative, but the trends are there. Zelle, when they pivoted from being just a, uh, a payment app to an integrated banking solution, their usage skyrocketed. Zelle now processes two and a half times the number of transactions of any of their competitors, including Venmo. 75% of us already bank online. 60% of us pay our bills online. Two thirds of our households give to charity. And that's the trajectory that Giveo is on. So we're different. There is charitable giving software. It's out there. But we're designed for the donor. We're integrated with banks. That brings trust. Trust brings relationships. The relationships are sticky. How many of you realize that you will change your jobs or move homes more frequently then you will change your bank. It's true for all of us. We make our revenue off of a transaction fee. We charge 4% on the total donation. It's far below the industry average for fundraising costs today, far below. Um, we are working on a subscription package for our customers because our banks are asking us for more services. We'll roll that out in 2023. We also have opportunities for advertising revenue, other industries, related industries like HR. Uh, and employment. We're an experienced team. We've done this before. This is our fourth company. Our, our technology has raised hundreds of millions of dollars. So I'm here looking for bridge financing, trying to raise half a million dollars to advance our company. We're working on our Series A, and I would love to talk to you at our table. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent job, Gary. I personally would love to be able to do that. Um, our next company is Orion Biotechnology. Orion Biotechnology is based on a groundbreaking research from the University of Geneva. They have developed the world's first drug discovery platform, Precision Small Peptides and Proteins, unlocking their full therapeutic end potential. Please welcome CEO Mark Groper. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to introduce our company. And I'm thinking, based on the earlier presentations, I may be moving our headquarters to Washington here. <laughs> but we'll see. <Yeah. clears throat> Certainly very enticing. Um, well, Orion has developed an exciting new approach to drug development, which is literally extending the current boundaries of drug ability in the industry. This technology has a compelling three-part value proposition that prompted me to personally invest a million dollars of my own capital into the company. So I'm very excited to tell you about it today. Well, there remains today no treatment for still about 70% of serious diseases. And a major roadblock in developing new treatments is that a key group of drug targets called G-protein coupled receptors have proven to be undruggable using current drug discovery technologies. And as a result, 85% of these important targets still remain undrugged today. This tree diagram represents the entire superfamily of GPCRs. And as you can see, there has been a high degree of success at the top portion of the tree. But uh, these really represented the low-hanging fruit. The lower blue portion of the tree are the protein GPCRs, and these still remain today a large untapped opportunity. 
Orion has to date drugged three receptors in this group of, uh, of targets, and this has already generated a $130 billion market opportunity for the company. So we really have just scratched the surface of what's possible and the opportunity that is presented here. Uh, Orion's solution to targeting these GPCRs is based on precision engineering natural proteins in order to target the full binding pocket of the receptor. Uh, this, this approach has uh, proven to have significant competitive advantages, including, for example, producing much higher potency drugs and also drugs with superior modulation capabilities. The secret sauce here is Orion's drug discovery platform. This platform is not only allowing us to effectively target these receptors with better drugs, it's also enabling us to develop these drugs five times faster than is currently possible, so extremely efficient. We at this point have fully validated this technology and approach across multiple programs. Orion currently has eight different targeted therapeutics in our pipeline and our lead program has already completed a phase one clinical trial. We have active collaborations with uh, external pharma companies and we have ongoing discussions currently with multiple strategic partners. So we're really positioned for significant growth moving forward. We have a world-class team behind the company, I'm pleased to say, with a proven track record. I myself am a 35-year veteran of the uh, industry, and I have two successful uh, exits under my belt. And we have one of the biggest names in the business backing this company. Sir Greg Winter is a Nobel Prize winner who successfully founded and exited three large biotechs based on his previous research. So we're very lucky to have him as part of the team. Uh, it's clear that Orion has a multi-billion uh, dollar valuation potential, and we also have near-term monetization opportunity with our cancer program, similar to this $1.2 billion deal that was recently signed by Roche for a comparable drug. It's important to note that this uh, represents uh, revenue with, for one uh, drug candidate only, so Orion will have multiple opportunities to achieve this type of exit. We're currently raising a $15 million Series A round and we're 90% through the second tranche of this round. We've been backed by experienced biotech investors including the Wellcome Trust and Koretsu and we have an attractive term sheet we're selling participating preferred shares. This really is an excellent time to get into Orion. The company has already completed a number of milestones that uh, significantly de-risk the investment and we have a strong value creation path moving forward so for our Series A investors. So in summary, Orion has a patented drug discovery platform with a compelling value proposition, the opportunity for exceptional financial returns, and this is all wrapped in a business model that provides excellent risk mitigation. So I hope you'll come reach out to us after the session. Thank you. So we have four more presenters left, and um, before I do that, I want to make sure you guys are signing up for next Wednesday's virtual rocket pitch. There's a QR code floating around, so hopefully you guys will do that. Okay, and it's in the program book. Thank you for that. Um, also, presenters, uh, you want to click hard on the clicker, just to make sure the, the slides advance properly. So to introduce our next four presenters, I'd like to bring up Ling Zhang. Ling is a managing director with Forbis. Forbis uh, in this region used to be better known as Dixon, Hughes and Goodman. They merged with another firm and now they're a big eight accounting firm here in the country. And Ling runs their technology and life sciences practice for the region. So Ling, thank you so much for your support over the years. Come on up and uh, it's all yours. Tell us a little bit about Forbis. Thank you, Tian. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having us. My name is Ling, a managing director with Fulvis. How many people, how many of us here know Fulvis before today? Or how many of us don't know us? <laughs> so now you know. Fulvis is a top 10 US firm created by the, the merger of equals between BKD, Middle West uh, U.S. Fir firm, and also DHG, as Tian just introduced. In June 2022, 
very new, the name for this. Our legacy farms has a history of over 100 years. So uh, we offer tax audit and advisory solutions to our clients nationally. Our differentiator is we are for this. We provide a match the client experience. So let's get back to the business. I have engagement letters ready for you guys to sign. <laughs> Just joking. Um, so they, uh, I would like to introduce PainScript. PainScript offers a physician-focused chronic care management platform, which improves patient care plan and medication compliance. Let's welcome Dan Cohen, the CEO of PainScript. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> Thank you, Tian. Appreciate having uh, you having us here this evening. The biggest challenge in healthcare today, especially for chronic patients, is the lack of care plan adherence and medication compliance. It's a $600 billion hole that's blown in direct cost each year to the system. Add that to payer led healthcare paradigms that result in lowering of physician and staff productivity, significant increases in non billable work. It's a problem that needs repair, and more importantly, modernization while matching a treating physician's standard workflows. Our physician-centric platform, it's a game changer. It works for chronic care management for both the practice and the patient. Our SaaS platform automates the process, reduces costs, and drives new revenue. Our processes work. It's been demonstrated in nine peer-reviewed and published clinical trials a post-commercialization published peer review observational trial for efficacy, and perhaps most importantly, our initial commercialized physician-led practices. We accomplish all of this via our HIPAA-compliant, white label to the physician's practice app. It creates a better than 92% response to daily communications, compliance monitoring, and proactive alerts based on the fully customized workflow and medication guidelines. It improves compliance, and it's supported by AMA CPT billing requirements. Integrating with the practice's EMR, all of this functionality is achieved on the patient's smartphone. Chronic care management is a major healthcare issue, and there are others trying to tackle this problem. However, based on our team's experience and expertise, we have addressed the shortcomings of the other solutions. The key differentiation in our approach is that our platform engages with the patient for as long as they are under a physician's care. There is a huge market opportunity in the United States alone. Within the chronic care market, we are prioritizing pain and substance use disorder. And with the funding we are seeking, we will add the largest growing market in the US today, pun fully intended, of obesity. Initially, our focus is on physician groups, but will expand over time to the larger hospital systems once we build on our existing proof points. We have completed our initial commercial launch and already have practices on our platform following over 600 patients. Practice growth and scale will be a primary focus of our use of funds. My team is amazing. It has extensive experience in every aspect of the healthcare ecosystem and very direct experience in our initial verticals. In addition, we have a very engaged scientific advisory board with nationally recognized physician leaders to design and review every part of our clinical program. Our relationships will allow us to engage more quickly with physicians and their practices. To date, we have received investments of over $2.3 million and are now looking for an additional $2.4 million to leverage our existing proof points and to build on our sales, distribution, and marketing efforts, with more than two-thirds of the resources raised earmarked for commercial activities. So why us? We have the people. We have the product. We have terrific results in both benefit for the patient and for the physician practice. So why now? We've set the table. And as an investor, I'm asking you to invest in a highly de-risked product with a substantial upside, a financial no-brainer. We improve practice time management, reduce cost, and improve revenue generation. All of our customers operate in the black. We are solving for one of the most critical issues in healthcare today, 
and our chronic care solution operates in three very broad and very deep sectors. Our solution works. The time to get on board is now. I look forward to visiting with you at the break. Thank you. Thanks, Dan, for the amazing uh, presentation. So the next presenter, I would like to introduce Denise Taylor, the CEO of Privo. Privo was founded in 2001 and is considered as a leading authority in minus digital privacy. Let's welcome Denise. Uh, good evening. My company is Privacy Vaults Online, and we're digital experts in minors' privacy and identity protection. And when I founded Privo, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act was the only game in town. I had a vision that helping companies comply with COPPA would be a very large and profitable business. But during this time, over these years, uh, companies kept their head in the sand, and they uh, turned a blind eye. And I would say to you today that the, the gig is up. The time is done. If you saw the uh, 60 Minutes last Sunday, you would see the terrific uh, information. I see heads nodding about the harms to children. Uh, we're at a tipping point. Minors' privacy laws are everywhere. And there's no place to hide. They're global. They're coming at us in the US, both at state and federal level. They're in the UK. Their safety, privacy, and no longer are we going to have 12 and under children fibbing at every age gate. Next slide. This is a global opportunity with an estimated $52 billion market, TAM. It makes sense when you consider that one in three internet users is a minor under the child, under the age of 18. So that's 1.6 billion children are globally online. But as the slide says, nobody knows who's a kid. Our newest innovation is a patented minors device and data query service. We're going to signal to every age gate that there's a child at their gate. Is there a kid at my digital door? Where Privo is like ring for the internet. We're going to make the internet age aware for the first time ever. Privo's laser focused on two things, and we do them very well. Our software and services help companies comply with complex regulation and let kids in. On the other hand, when necessary, we help them keep kids out. By putting companies on notice that the device showing up at the door is being managed by a child, knowing a kid's at that digital door that's a game changer. There are strong barriers to entry. We're one of six authorized Federal Trade Commission safe harbors. We're the only one with tech. I have eight issued patents protecting our IP, a five-star reputation, 90-plus percent customer retention rate, and marquee brands as my initial customers. Our model is recurring professional services through our membership program, our compliance program, our traditional SaaS integration and software services, subscriptions, transaction fees for age and identity verification. And as we scale, we'll go B to B to C, leveraging the permission data that we have the benefit uh, and, the, and, the, and the trust to hold. Our revenue projections are bona fide. We have a hockey stick on that last slide. Company deadlines, 2024, that is the inflection point. Top line revenues are forecast to grow from 2.4 million this year to over 86 million. I'm going to grow 100 companies to 1,400 companies. I'm going to triple their annual spend. And most importantly, I'm going to take the 250 accounts I have protected under management and grow that to 70 plus million. So how will we accomplish this? With our bridge financing today, it will help me address the immediate needs to meet the tsunami that's coming. Additional engineering, activating marketing, and, and providing some support for sales. We're all in coming now. We want to activate outbound sales. And for our institutional financing, we have Akamai 
the world's leading, leading edge provider who is a confirmed strategic. I'd like to thank you uh, for listening, taking the time to consider children in your world, to join Privo. Let's help make the internet age aware. Thank you very much, Denise. The, I know a lot of parents here definitely appreciate what you are doing. Thank you. And what's next? Solus AI. Solus AI provides software development and AI consulting to large banks, insurers, healthcare providers, and fintechs. Let's welcome Larry Bradley, co-founder and COO Fortune 100 health insurer came to Solas AI and asked us to look at a model that was trying to predict autism in children. Our software was able to evaluate that model and detect that in fact it was only working well for boys and not for girls. Our software was then able to adjust the model so that it boosted the prediction for girls by 20%. That means tens of thousands of families are now getting uh, now getting preventative services that they weren't before. So the customer was very happy that we were able to improve the fairness of their model, but they were also happy about the fact that it in fact will lower the lifetime cost of many of those customers through the preventive services. So Solas AI, it does a great job of detecting and removing bias and discrimination from customer models, but that's just the beginning. Because in fact, what we've done is stumble on a solution to a much bigger problem. That problem is the fact that between 80 and 90 percent of machine learning and data science projects either fail to go to production or fail to deliver the promised business results. What Gartner is telling us now is that if customers begin investing in technologies to help with this problem, they can see a 50 percent increase in success by 2026. So the problem that we are solving is not just a regulatory problem or even a branding problem, but it really is a business problem because unethical AI and um, untrustworthy AI can have a real negative impact to, the, to a company's bottom line. The way we solve this is that we consume the customer's model as well as additional metadata about it and then we begin running it through a series of analyses and optimizations so that what comes out the other side is a fairer, but often even better performing version of the model that they gave us. And then we're able to return to them a model in the same architecture they provided us so that we don't trap them in something proprietary. What this means is that we actually end up cutting across three very large technology segments. Um, for a global market of 19.2 billion in 2025, the thing is that all of these markets are still very fragmented and there's not a single dominant player or single dominant solution in any one of them. And in fact, the machine learning operations and automated machine learning markets are growing at 40 and 46 percent respectively. Solas AI is the only uh, industry agnostic end-to-end -end solution for this problem right now. But what's also interesting is that even when we go head-to-head -head with competitors who focus on a specific business domain or specific business use case, we still perform as well, if not better, than they do. So our traction to date is we've sold $560,000 in subscriptions since April of 2022. We have a really active pipeline that includes very large brands and um, enterprises in the health insurance, property and casualty insurance, banking, and, um, and employment spaces. Well, you know, over the next two years, we do expect moderate growth as we continue to invest in sales and marketing, but it's really in 2025 that we believe the more generalized version of the platform will be available, and that'll be the inflection point that really begins to drive growth and profitability. Our team really begins with our chairman, Dr. Bernard Siskin, 
45 years ago, he created how courts and regulators view discrimination and how they use statistics in the courtroom. He then, and he did that for employment, and then he took it to the banking industry in 1990. Most major banks still f follow his guidance and follow, um, uh, follow that guidance. So uh, the opportunity, we're asking for, uh, a $1 million seed round. We're going to be using those funds to build out our sales, marketing, and customer success. We do expect to raise a Series A um, of at least $3 million in 2023. Thank you very much. Be happy to talk to you at our table and maybe even help stop Skynet. Thank you, Larry. For the uh, amazing presentation and your team, um, the solution, AI solution you bring to the tech community, appreciate that. The last company <laughs> presenting today is AG. AG is the future of influencer marketing. The AI platform disrupts and inverts the way things are done for social media marketing at a scale. Let's Welcome Brad Bergenson, the founder and CEO of AG. Alexander's Grace is a tech company disrupting the influencer marketing industry. AG is a new, innovative platform that bridges the gap between brands and influencers on a mass scale. For the first time ever, a brand can now work with 100, 1,000, or even more influencers on any campaign all at the same time. No more contracts, no more payments to influencers, no more wasted time. For influencers, the platform, the leads, the future web store, everything we offer is all free. AG rates each influencer using a system we call the Influencer Trust Score, or ITS. This algorithm scrapes followership, engagement, and more to assign each influencer a value per campaign. Eventually, ITS will identify bots and filter out influencers with fake engagement. Once a relationship is formed between a brand and an influencer, our automated system does the rest. The influencer will receive talking points and instructions to complete the campaign step by step. Brands will be able to see in real time when an influencer is either active, pending, or complete during the campaign process. Once our technology verifies their post, the influencer will be paid by AG via PayPal. It does not matter how old you are, what you look like, or how many followers you have to join AG. Anyone with an Instagram qualifies to earn money with us. Your time is now. Join us today at alexandersgrace.com. Good evening. Hi. Influencer marketing in 2022 is a very, very broken industry. There's a lot of problems, and AG's proprietary technologies are poised to fix these problems and bottlenecks, both for the influencers and for the brands. So let's talk about the brands for a second. Currently today, it is costing brands hundreds or thousands of dollars just to search for influencers online. There is not a single mass scale platform that exists. You also have this super outdated, inefficient method where you're working with one influencer with one brand at a time. So if Coke wanted to work with 10,000 people at the same time, you have to have 10,000 conversations and emails and talking points and contracts. It is millions of hours of wasted time. And you also have bots, right? You got this crazy amount of bots plaguing the industry. Everyone saw the whole saga on Twitter, right? So what are we gonna do about this? Our solution lies in this influencer trust score. We scrape everyone's data, we know the followership, the engagement, we will be able to actually detect bots in our system and fake engagement in our system. Our wizard makes it so easy for all the brands to push through because we're actually taking all of our users, our influencers, and we're aggregating them together in buckets. So imagine these buckets of influencers that we can get to run these influencer marketing campaigns at scale. Our MVP is finally complete. It's been two and a half years of grinding, but we are live. We are launching case studies here locally in Maryland. 
We're launching a new campaign structure called IFA. Let's check this out. Who's got Twitter in the room? Imagine if you're a brand and you want to grow your Twitter on organically, you could actually pay us to get influencers to follow your Twitter. That does not exist today outside of all the bots. In the future, we're also launching a web store for free for all of our influencers, which will be another vertical of revenue for us. We're looking to project 7,500 campaigns by year three with half a million influencers in our platform conservatively, which will generate $15 million uh, with, by 2025 and profitable by year two. Look, there's thousands of companies in the influencer marketing space that are competitors, but I promise you, do your due diligence and you will find there are very, very few tech companies in the influencer marketing space. We are literally going to invert this entire industry. So we are currently seeking $500,000 we are currently seeking $500,000 at a $2.5 million valuation. We have currently raised a little over half a million dollars to date in our pre-seed round at a 1.4, and we're seeking $500 at a $2.53 million. So I've had a handful of startups myself, been a top sales performer for 20 years. The real superstar of this team is sitting in the back. His name is Scott Mitchell. He's a graduate of Maryland, uh, full stack engineer for 14 years. Just quit PayPal after five years to come on board full time with me to scale this to the next level. So I'm super grateful for that. That's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brad. Great job. Appreciate it. Uh, with that, uh, that concludes our presentations. We have the place till quarter to nine out there. We have food and beverages, and then we're going to go upstairs to the eighth floor if you guys are game. And that'll go pretty late. So thank you, guys. Let's give it up for our presenting companies, please. Great job, guys. And uh, be sure to go chat with them and uh, ask any questions you might have. Jen, next Wednesday, Connectpreneur Online. We'll see you there. Thank you, guys. Thank you.